<laughs> Welcome back to the channel. All right, it is time to run down the top 10 champions in the Cosmic class as it stands in December 2022. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, we've already done three of the classes. I will obviously continue on with them, and there'll be a couple more fun top 10s. And what I've done is I've pulled my server. I put up a few champions, and then people who've earned uh, some honorary roles and titles in my server are then allowed to add some other champions, and then we all vote. Literally, everyone on the server gets a chance to vote. I will run down the one through 10 along with honorable mentions to them. And I will also give you my own list too, because I know so many of you are like, well, dude, we want to know what you think. Uh, so that will also be there. Before we jump fully into that list, I want to point out my dog Nova is here. She has recently fallen asleep, but a few seconds ago, she was she was a puppy, uh, puppy antics for sure. I believe she's going to be disappointed to know that Nova will not be on the top 10 list and somehow didn't make the honorable mention. I'm going to throw Nova on there myself because he can do things and was a real problem for me in Battlegrounds the other night. But before we jump into the honorable mentions, uh, and I, this means they're not on my list nor the server's list, we've got Cersei, Carnage. TJ loves Carnage. Loves him. Loves, loves, loves Carnage. Uh, Terax, Silver Surfer, Ronin, Red Goblin, Annihilus, Medusa, Venom. All those are fantastic champions. We can do a lot for you. Different immunity sets, damage sources, all these things. There's a reason why they're on there. The first one, this is where, and I, I, there's going to be, a, the last video had some me and the server diverging. This one's going to have uh, quite a few, especially in these first few in the top 10. My server has Corvus Glaive as number 10. I'm not going to talk about Corvus a ton when it's my time to rank him or where I when I place him. I'm going to attribute this to, to two things, to two things. Maybe people seeing a lot of benefit in other uh, masteries now, right? Like inequity and all these various things and seeing how much it benefits the champions they enjoy running and playing. Battlegrounds has been coming in and that's been extremely popular. And so maybe not as many people are running the recoil tree. They really can be very powerful, no doubt about it. And Corvus benefits significantly from them. I think more likely though, or just as likely, or even more so, or more uh, part of the thinking process here, is that this happens every time. I've been playing this game long enough now. You see Corvus came out in 2018, so he's been around a while. Every time that a new rank becomes kind of the tip top meta, right? So rank fours are kind of becoming the thing in this game. I'm sure there'll be rank fives in the next three or four or five months. Right now it's ranked four and we're starting the, the in-game players starting to get in the high teens or the low twenties and Corvus tends to suffer in prestige at that point. And I don't mean prestige in game. I mean, you know, the prestige because the health pools have grown. And so he can't get things done when in his first set of charges and people who play Corvus like to get it done in his first set of charges. So I think that's truly what's going on here. You're going to see him show up in my list significantly higher up. And for number 10, I actually have Venom Pool. I think Venom Pool is a very high quality champion. When he first came out, I thought for sure that Venom was still maybe better or they were about equal, but there's been a lot of utility and pieces in there that have put into Venom Pool's kit that have now been um, incentivized or have, there's been uh, tricks or defenders or node sets that really want you to use Venom Pool as a great, I, as a result, I think he's fantastic. And also he has a, a litany of really powerful synergies with other high quality champions i really like venom pool i think if you pull him early he's always going to show uh, see you through a ton of content because he is so absolutely versatile okay number nine i mean this is worthy right you get you don't even have to have him at sig 200 you get him at a decent sig and this guy is really tough to kill trust me i have tried and i mean kill him offensively using him he just heals so much so many people will even bring him into uh, map eight and aq or questing content, or really tough fights. And yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Although his damage is not bad, you know, it really is not. The armor breaks and the poison and all that stuff, it's really quite good. His buff was was quality. But the big thing you're bringing him in for is he's just gonna save you so many items. And that right there is extremely valuable to an account. Uh, there's not much more to say about him. I mean, he's great. If you have questions about him, go check out Simula, uh, Simula's channel. It feels like every time there's a new EOP boss, Simula somehow finds a way to solo him with King Group. And then my number uh, nine champion, not going to talk about her too much here because she's going to show up on the server's rankings here in a second, is Angela. High Sig Angela, an extremely, extremely powerful weapon in this game. Okay, as I said, Angela was going to show up very soon. Number eight on my server's rankings 
here is Angel. I think for me though, like I said, there was no format put on this. It wasn't like, hey, the best in BGs or the best in question or whatever, which I think is really cool because it gives insight into how people are playing the game and how they're valuing champions. I think for, for me though, to place her this high and where I had her, you want that really high sig. You want her getting rid of those damaging debuffs very, very fast, if not instantaneously. Also, that nullify and auto block ability accuracy getting reduced, that's a big deal. I love nullify immune champions. I really, really like that. And then this other part, we're starting to see this come in a little bit. It's not ton, it's not make or break, but it's a really nice piece of utility to have. Uh, this advanced training allows Angela to parry non-contact attacks. Always really tough, you know, if you don't have your repair in or we have, or we have uh, champions now like Shuri who just have no contact attacks. She's great. She's fantastic. She's going to see you through a ton of content. Also, really, really love Angela, and I think she's worthy of number eight. And then for me, I have her uh, her old papa, old man Odin. He's fantastic. He's great. The There's other champions now. I think Chorus is one we went through who has actually that true strike ability of his. It's phenomenal. We'll talk about him, though, a little bit more in the rankings. Number seven in my, in my servers list is... Um, it's null, and I have to tell you, my server is wrong. They just are—they're just not right. Like uh, I, I don't know how else to put this. Uh, null. I guess maybe I'll talk a bit more about null when it comes to my place because clearly I like him so much, and I'm obviously having fun with it. Uh, I do understand uh, maybe why they would put him here. Let's not talk about why he's not better because I'll talk about why he's so good here in a second. Noel's fantastic, he's awesome. You can run him with recoil, you can run him without. I've shown that multiple times in a variety of videos. I've shown it in war, in long content, in questing. He is fantastic. He's fantastic. Uh, we're seeing his abilities be really come into use as Alliance War bosses, Alliance War defender. He's benefiting from the global, or at least he did in tier one. And then also being a real menace in battlegrounds. Like what more do you want out of a champion? He's also extremely unique. I said I was going to talk about him now, but I just like him that much. We're going to talk about him now. He's also extremely unique in the Cosmic class is that he's not bringing up his own buffs. He's not buff immune, but he's not relying on these Furies or, uh, you know, the crit damage or crit rate. I can't think what they're called right now, but he's phenomenal. All of these armor breaks, he's reducing the combat power rate of the defender when he's got corruption up. If they try to heal and you've got him at a high sig, it turns into a degen instead. He's phenomenal. It does take a little bit of getting used to him. And I got myself in trouble in war season like two or three seasons ago, forgetting which of his attacks had the you know non-evade and all of that. But you get that down, you're totally fine. And it's really not that difficult. It's nowhere near like learning Tiger or Quicksilver or anything like that. He's he is awesome. I cannot speak highly enough of Null. And uh, I will mention something when he finally comes into my part of the rankings. And then uh, for me, as far as my number seven champion, this is where I place Corvus. I don't want us to call it a different tier, but he's kind of somewhere in this middle ground for me between the champions that are right above him and then where I had Odin. I really do like Odin. I love Odin. I think Odin's great, but I recognize the power that Corvus still has, especially ramped up. You got him with the uh, uh, power backs. You throw on the recoil tree, and if you have him at the rank, I don't want to call it a rank appropriate because it makes it sound like if he's not the highest rank, it's not okay, it's fine. But if you had him at that highest rank that most of the champions really pushing the envelope are being used, you're going to notice a significant difference. If you feel otherwise, if you have experience with a rank four Cor Corvus and you're like, hey, you got him too high, let me know. But I really don't think very many people are going to do that. People in my own alliance who have a rank four Corvus I, I giggle when they get to use him in Alliance War. I don't know if they giggle, but I assume they do. And I can see how giddy they are. Really curious to hear your thoughts. Rank 4 Corvus, I think still up there is the number 7. And definitely in a separate tier, as far as a top 10 list is concerned, than Odin. Okay, and then as far as my server is concerned, the number 6 champion is Odin. I blame this completely on DLL. I think this is 100% his fault for showing them how good Odin can be. And he knows what he's doing. I hope you can understand I'm having a good time with this. Oh, DL is brilliant. He's a champion designer for this game and the game is better for it. Uh, I, I Odin's great. And I do think he's unique with that true strike off the SP1, his nice SP2. He can handle some of these larger health pools that we're sometimes seeing. He's outrageously tanky. So I get it. And I'm gonna make this less about how much better I think Null is than Odin and more about this is just how good Odin is. I, you don't need him awakened, which is a really nice benefit too. 
uh, and then he can apply those pre-fights. And you know what? That is something to keep in mind, that he can make other teammates better, even that syn just flat synergy, I think it is, with Angela. So I get it. I get why he's valued very, very highly, especially if you start to consider the team aspect, and that is a big deal in this game where we can take in typically more than one champion. And we actually saw him be very good in Eternity of Pain fights here uh, the last few months. Soloing them on his own, obviously you can't be bringing in uh, synergy partners for that. So maybe I'll, I'll back off a little bit on this, but in my number six, and I should say that they had Noel and Odin one vote apart, one point, 76 to 75. So they know what they're doing. They're just smart. That's, my server is full of smart people. All right, and then uh, on number six, I have Noel. I already just told you how wonderful I think Noel is. And uh, I'll just add on one more thing. He is amazingly fun to play. You really feel like you're playing this outrageously villainous god. And it, it's really cool. Okay, let's move on to the number five champion. Number five champion on my server's rankings is Hyperion. One thing I want to point out, I just let you know how, what the vote tally was between Odin and Null, 76, 75. There was a, a massive tier jump here, a massive, massive tier jump. Hyperion going all the way up to 174. So about a hundred more vote points uh, the next one, and I, I I actually do agree with this. As good as I think Null is, and as much as as good as I think Odin is, and what Odin brings to the table, Hyperion, despite not having a buff and coming into this game since 2016, is still that good. And I've talked about this at length. If you're familiar with my channel, you've been watching long enough, you know that yes, he's got the damage, right? You could have all this wonderful utility, but if you don't have enough damage, then what good does it do? He's got incredible damage. Uh, potential. I know some people were like, well, he's a little RNG dependent, but that's often for like wanting to win that battleground fight in 35 seconds. Oh no, it goes to 50. I get it. It can cause a loss of these extremely high tiers of battlegrounds, but you still got the fight down in 50. That, I mean, if that's the biggest negative you can come up with for a champion, that's a really good champion. But the big thing with him is that power gain. We talk about this all the time. It's one of the reasons why I think Mystics are probably so difficult to make and balance and why Myst Mystics are so powerful in this game is that for the most part, they always deal with power or they have some way of dealing with power and that is power is involved in every single fight in this game. Even if it's the absence of power, the ability to not gain it or the absence of the ability to gain it, that's still dealing with power and Hyperion just gets this power gain, allowing him to cycle through. His SP1's got a nice effect, his SP2 has great effects, his SP3 does as well. He's phenomenal, he's fantastic, he is aged like fine wine and he actually is my number five rated uh, Cosmic Champion as well. You know how elated I was when I finally, finally pulled him. There's a reason why. The number four champion in the Cosmic class is Cosmic Ghost Rider and as I did my own list, this almost felt weird. It felt odd. I think part of it is because I started kind of at 10 or I kind of looked at this as a group as I was doing my rankings and to not have him at number one just felt a little strange. I, I think that I don't have him at number one and I'll just tell you right now, I also have him at number four. But when you got a channel like uh, Slayer of Gods showing you like Cosmic Ghost Rider, what feels like soloing every single uh, in-game boss and then soloing all the Eternity of Pain fights and then we see how dominant he is in battlegrounds he's fantastic in war he has a dual immunity set he also has the ability to get the power gain uh we're seeing him being used i think slayer just put out even the video of using him against nimrod where you can't get the armor breaks or the benefit from the armor breaks that is just a phenomenal phenomenal champion he's outrageously fun to play he has a variety of rotations that you can use depending on what the node and uh and defender require you to do i remember i pulled him extremely early i loved him but i was worried that as things got more complicated he wouldn't be able to hold up but the fact of the matter is we're seeing he holds up just fine people use him to beat korg in battlegrounds i mean that's just blowing my blowing me away a bit here and i think all it does is really speak to the power of the cosmic class at the top end now he came in with 219 votes. It was a nice little separation from Hyperion. I, I, I love, as much as I love Hyperion, I do think Cosmic Ghost Rider is even more well-suited for where the game's currently at and where it's going, but Hyperion's aging like fine wine. I, honestly, these top five, I all have an argument. I think as we get closer to number one, and that's kind of basically how I started to formulate it, is who has the strongest argument to be number one? Cosmic Ghost Rider number four on my servers list and also on mine. 
are number three champion on my servers list. And I have to tell you, I agree with them. I agree with them. Where he's good, he is outrageous. He is outrageous. And so if Battlegrounds and fights with armor up and, and uh, these sorts of things he's re uh, resistant to, like what is it, the power drain, right? Let's go ahead and confirm that. I don't want to say it and be wrong. Yeah, immunity, power drain, burn, lock, and special lock. Those are in the game. It feels like they're more and more prevalent. It helps you with Nimrod, really troublesome defender, Penny Parker, these sorts of things. I mean, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal champion. And as I said, as I started to look at this, it was who has the strongest argument, in my opinion, to be number one, because I think there's five champions who could make an argument. I have it number three. You know I love him when he and the Quicksilver uh, Cav Crystals are out. I was very honest, and I said, I want Gallon more. I think Quicksilver is great. I want Gallon more. I did a video. I believe I, I was on a summer vacation in Mexico. I think I was on a pool deck. I was about three Mai Tais in or three, I don't know, whatever, some drink. It was a coconut drink, actually, now that I think about it. But anyways, I was like three drinks in, and I tested him on the CCP server, and I was like, I need this guy. He is going to be amazing in war, in battlegrounds. He can be very good in questing, but he's not as eye-popping outrageous as it is in war and in battlegrounds. I think that's what he was made for. They did a phenomenal job. They hit the nail, they hit the target on the head, all those analogies. He's phenomenal, he's great. You don't need him at SIG 200. You do want him awakened. You can see why there, right? It's helping power him up and I love that. I love champions that power up from things that they are immune to. It's a great, great uh, ability set or uh, yeah, ability set that they've started putting in the game more and more. I love it, it's fantastic. I think it really goes to this idea of uh, not being niche, right, but having specialties in a game of specialties, not a bunch of generals that are the almost overpowered and a bunch of really niche. There's just this middle ground where they have a variety of uses. He's outrageously strong. He's one of my favorite champions in the game. I, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll do a top 10 my favorite champions. He definitely is one. Rank three, I think you could put him at two. I think you can make an argument for one. I've got him at three. My servers also got him at three. Okay, if you know my channel well, you know this is tough for me to not have Hulkling as the number one champion. But again, there's another champion out there, and I think you all know who it is. Hulkling is phenomenal. Again, I wasn't on the, the vacation just yet, but he's someone who I, I actually, with him, I read the ability, and I was like, this guy, this guy. And then I played him, and I wanted him. I just did, and went out and got him. He's been everything I hoped he would be. Used him in war early, just destroying champions. He's got the dual immunity set from damage sources. He's phenomenal. He can go unblockable. Uh, he's a little harder to fight in Battlegrounds than I wish he was, but if you get your neutralized champion, you're going to be A-OK, -okay. and Mojo's obviously very good against him. I, there's just I run out of superlatives to describe Hulkling. If you are if you're like, what are you talking about? Go to my channel, look at the playlist on Hulkling. You'll see a litany, a list, a long, long list of videos I've made on this guy. He's phenomenal. He's great. He's awesome. And he's definitely going to show up very high in the top champions from 2020. Uh, the Waken ability, I think, is very nice. I do have him at SIG 200. I don't think you need that, but I do really, really like it. He's I, I can run out. I could sit here and talk for 10 minutes about how great he is. He's phenomenal. Server has him as number two champion, and uh, I have him as the number two champion as well. If you're wondering how I choose between him and Gallon, is for me, I think Hulkland is better in a... He's like, if if Gallon's a 10 out of 10 and say like two modes, I think Hulkling's a, a 10 out of 10 or a nine out of 10. And then I think he's also an eight or nine in just general questing, all these other health pools and things like that as well. It's splitting hairs, but I do think Hulkling has a stronger case to be the number one champion in the Cosmic class. That's why I've got him there. Okay, and then is anyone really surprised? Number one champion in the server rankings and also in my own personal is Hercules. I, I wanted to put Hulkling or uh, Gallon up there as far as for me, as far as like the most fun to play or or what have you, or the ones I enjoy the most. But I, it would be disingenuous for me to do that. That's a different list. If I'm doing the top 10, I, it's obvious. It is Hercules. Um, you know, I think they're probably going to continue to try to work ways in that hurt him a little bit. But he's phenomenal without his awakened ability. And then you go Immortal. It's truly just outrageous. People use him to beat things in Alliance War. We all know we play Battlegrounds, you know, knowing he is a defender, the Infuriate, uh, and reducing the offensive ability accuracy. He's an amazing, incredible attacker. He's great. He's awesome. He is fun to play. Um, 
And I, you know, again, when he came into the game, I think everyone knew how good he was. I'm not going to claim some sort of victory on that one. Uh, but I said, he, he just feels like the dad, the guy who was telling dad jokes before he was even a dad, right? Like, he's just fun. He's awesome. Uh, I, I do think maybe he's a little bit overpowered, <laughs> a little bit, understatement of the year. But he's the number one champion. We're going to see him, I'm sure, when we do the top 10 champions of, in the whole game. I'm sure he'll be very high on that list. I think the only question is, is, is he one, two, three, or four? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Cosmic was an interesting one in that I felt like it was extremely top heavy. Uh, the votes as after I think it was down, you know, we saw how close Odin and Null were at six and seven, and even all the way down to, to Corvus was at 48. So it was a difference of 76 to 48, and then a massive jump up to 174 for Hyperion, and then Hercules came in at 329. Uh, so I think you can see the Hercules to Hyperion group was tight. Very much the group was the group, the server, and myself are very certain that these are the top five. Um, and then Noel soon thereafter and Odin. I think though that's an interesting sign for me. I think we're gonna see some powerful cosmics continue to come into the game. I think so many of us think of them as maybe being the, the strongest class in the game. I know before I did this exercise, I would have maybe thought they were too. But then when I really saw it, I think it's just that they're so incredibly top heavy, and those top five are just so outrageous. When Hulkling and Gallon are not the number one champion in the class. That means the class is outrageously strong at the top. Let me know what you think we got right. Let me know what you think you got wrong. You all are doing, I, I'm really enjoying going back and reading the comments. It feels like somehow the really angry people either aren't commenting or maybe I'm just not making people angry, which is fine. Uh, but I enjoy reading all the comments and learning from you all. I'm very curious to hear about your thoughts on really the whole list, but definitely Corvus and also Venompool. If any of you are like, hey, my account's not that big. I'm relatively new to the game. I did pull Venompool and you're right. He is helping me handle a ton of stuff. He might not be the best for it, but he can handle a variety of things. Or if you're like, no, dude, you're wrong. He sucks. I would like to know. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back at this very, very soon with Science and Mutant and then a couple other lists I think you're really going to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.